Oh, hi everyone, welcome back. It is a grey, old, miserable, yucky, disgusting day out there. Hopefully the sound is okay and the clatter of the rain on the roof isn't upsetting what's going on. Anyway, today is perhaps not the perfect day to talk about awnings, but I've had a project going on for quite a few years now that I think has got to the point where I want to talk about it and I want to share um, what I've been doing in case it's of interest. It's probably a very specialised project, but I thought you might be interested to see what I've been up to anyway. And the overall vision for this project is, if you like the Lord of the Rings analogy, uh, one awning to rule them all. So the huge benefit of this Ariba with its very short awning rail height is that actually awnings that fit VW vans and Ford Transit Connects, that sort of smaller end of the camper van range, actually fit Aribas as well. So we can get away with using the whole range of, of drive away awnings. Uh, but of course the downside is that we can't fit standard caravan awnings. So that means our options are a little bit different from most caravan owners. And having a small caravan and two increasingly large lads and uh, husband coming along sometimes as well, that means uh, an awning is very important to us. So an awning is used quite a lot of the time uh, because this is a tiny space. That's one of the downsides of having a, a tiny caravan. So it's good to be able to spread out a little bit more, make the most of that pitch space. So back when we bought this back in 2000. 17, the first thing I put on an order was a huge, great, formal, polled awning. And that came from, um, where did it come from? So that came from Vortex, Vortenten. Vortenten, yeah, my Dutch accent is appalling, sorry. Um, and Vortex are a small family firm that make bespoke awnings and everything is, is handmade. Um, so it is an absolutely beautiful awning, but it's also on the pricier end of things. It's about where Isabella are. So for something that is made to order bespoke, um, frankly, that's pretty good <laughs> compared to uh, mass manufacturing of things. Anyway, it's an absolutely beautiful awning, but of course it takes a while to put up. It's a full awning, it's a big awning. And I guess had I thought about it more carefully, then I might have done something different. Um, but anyway, we have this huge, massive awning. But uh, that's impossible for me to put up when I'm on my own with the boys. Certainly was when our children were smaller. Now they're bigger. I'm sure we could manage it. We have taken it down by ourselves uh, when we were in Keswick. And I think at the time the boys were eight and 11 or nine and 12, you know, some, something of that order. So we were able to, to put it down and pack it up perfectly well together. So back to the project at hand, uh, one awning to rule them all. And what I really, really wanted was an awning that um, was narrow enough on the pitch. So if the caravan was here, the awning didn't stick out too far to make us too big for uh, caravan and camp camping and caravanning club pitches and camping in the forest pitches, because technically those are only eight by five meters. Uh, and although this caravan is sort of standard width so there's something like 215 centimeters wide you know by the time you add something that's anything over two and a half meters as your awning um, then you're starting to get into trouble so you certainly can't get a three meter one on technically with a, um, a two just over two meter wide caravan so I wanted something that worked on those pitches because we do like to go to quite a lot of camping in the forest places I haven't use many uh, caravan and camping club sites, camping and caravanning, I oh, keep getting that the wrong way around. I haven't used many of the camping and caravanning club sites and I'll explain why in a separate video. But the, I wanted something that, that worked with the caravan and likewise worked with the van. The van is a very similar width to the caravan. It's just a few centimeters narrower. So I do use towing mirrors, as you'll have seen. And actually I, do, I can see behind the caravan with the towing mirrors on the van, whereas I can't with the van standard mirrors. So that tells you something about the importance of width and being able to see behind you. So I wanted something that enabled us to fit on standard pitches so it wasn't too wide. And the problem is most drive away awnings are massively deep. So they're probably a two and a half meter awning or three meter awning, but with a tunnel on the back of 80 or 90 centimeters. So you're well over three meters for most drive away awnings, or um, they fit long ways on next to the vehicle. And again, <laughs> you know, two and a half, three meters wide plus that, that awning tunnel. So most of the, I, d I don't know how most people with camper vans deal with these standard pitches at camping and caravanning club and camping in the forest sites, which claim they're five meters. Maybe they just put them closer and don't deploy the, the tunnel at the full sort of width. I don't know how they cope with it. Anyway, so I wanted one awning to rule them all. Um, and the other thing I wanted was the ones that were narrow enough were very sloped at the 
particularly at the front and also quite often at the sides. So there were tiny, tiny awnings and there was going to be no way of getting all the chairs out there. So I wanted something that had very square, flat sides, so more like a conventional awning. And at the time, back in 2017, early 2018, there wasn't anything like that on the market. Uh, these days, Van Gogh have brought out their Tolga, which had it been out at the time, I would have bought and not embarked, I think, on this project. But that certainly wasn't around at the time. Um, one or two manufacturers had something similar, but they were missing side doors. So you could only go in the front. So that was no good because I wanted side doors at the back as well as being able to access the front. So I'll bring up some pictures on the screen now. And this is an Outdoor Revolution T3 Vario, as was sold back in 17, 18, 19. These days it's, it's just a T3. And the reason I went for this one is that um, the Vario means that the door itself can be fitted uh, back in the normal position, but also right at the front or you can open the whole thing up and use it as a, a, a shelter. So it's already very flexible, but obviously it's way too deep on the pitch as you can see from the footprint uh, diagram. All right, so I started off with this Outdoor Revolution T3 Vario and this awning was replaced in 2019 or 20, I think with the ordinary T3s. So that meant on the updated T3, the door didn't move between the middle setting and right at the front. And then in the last year or two, they've also rotated the T3 around. So access it actually from the side rather than from the front. So as happened at the time, I ended up with an ex-demo show awning uh, because by the time I bought it, production stopped, so I couldn't actually get a brand new one. And then I got my full Dr. Frankenstein on. Yes, I cut up a brand new awning. I really did. So basically what I did was separate the front sunshade part from the main body. The floor was also sewn in, so the, the sewn in ground sheet also had to be cut. Uh, I left all the sort of draft flaps and that sort of stuff on the main side so that could operate as a standalone smaller awning. Then I attached a, a really long zip, so an extra long awning zip that I bought from a place called Bryan Park Camping. Um, I'll put a link below. They're a specialist awning parts and repair company, just a, a small family firm, I think. But uh, they do lots of really useful stuff if you're into uh, creating and modding and fixing things. So I attached that awning to both sides of the bit that I'd literally just cut off uh, so that actually it could be put back on when we were on a bigger pitch, but so that it was modular so that actually we'd fit and look sensible when we were on one of those small camping in the forest or car camping caravanning club sites. So I also stitched on in that process an extra, extra flap of fabric because first of all, it was th the space that I'd had to cut through was incredibly narrow. So it was really difficult to get that bit back through the machine and get everything sewed on efficiently. So I actually stitched to the zip to the extra flap first and then the flap onto the awning bit that I just cut off. So uh, as well as making it easier to stitch on, that extra flap of fabric actually uh, covers the zip to make it waterproof again. So it forms a seal over that joint uh, just to make sure we're not then leaking because I've, I've cut the two parts apart. Part. because also well you know in the UK middle of the summer we're bound to have rain aren't we I also put a bit of elastic in here to be able to peg the thing down tightly so if we needed to hold the flap down uh, I mean it's pretty secure already but uh, just in case it needed pegging down then there's a bit of elastic with a loop at each end that runs through that um, sort of seal piece now having cut the main body off it did look a bit weird with its uh, very flat front face uh, so I decided to make a sort of eyebrow which I did by first attaching some some webbing pockets onto that weather strip I was just talking about and then using some small thin fiberglass tent pole uh, to hold that fabric up it was really really tricky to get all the dimensions and the angles right so I tried a, a few different places of attaching the uh, the pole itself and then different shapes on the eyebrow. So eventually I got to a configuration that worked with a reshaped eyebrow pole and then uh, using some of the existing eyelets that were on, on the awning originally actually they're designed as guiding points so I, I used those to uh, be able to hold up that fiberglass pole at the correct tension and the correct place. And then I put some uh, straps down, so some quick detach straps, which would help to hold the thing together in the right place. 
And there we go. Um, a small setup with just the front eyebrow or the full setup with the, the full width of that front sunshade on. And remember the door can move from the midpoint to the front point. So if we've got this out and it's very bad weather and we could do a more internal awning space and we just move that front door forward. Or if it's very pleasant and we could do with slightly sheltered um, sunshade space, then the door just sits back at the normal point. So that gives us an interior depth of, of something like uh, three and a half meters wide and about 293 as the normal main part of the awning and then an extra one, 1 1.5-ish, bring us to a total depth of about four and a half meters if we really wanted. Now there was one thing which wasn't quite right since this awning was brand new and I, I first put it up and you may have spotted that in some of the early footage and that's that the central pole which was an air inflatable pole just never ever sat straight it always had a sort of kink in it for some reason it just it just couldn't get the tension right so I tried all sorts of combinations of pressures in that pole um, and I tried putting it on before I pumped the main tubes up or after I pumped the main tubes every possible combination but Eventually it just kinked really easily. So that needed to be solved as well. So first off, I bought two camper aluminium poles. These are actually rear pad support poles for their normal caravan awnings, but they work just fine here. And to protect the awning from them and, and the ends to stop things pushing things into the wrong positions and help them stay precisely in the right place, I made a couple of little pockets uh, from some really strong Kudura type fabric, which then just Velcros onto the existing Velcro patches in the awning. I did wonder at this point, um, whether I was actually supposed to have three inflatable poles for the roof and I'd, I'd been shortchanged and not been sent the correct number but I was assured by the supplier that uh, only one was included as standard and I'd have to buy another couple if I wanted more and frankly with the performance of the first one I was not paying out for some more poles certainly inflatable ones anyway I was going to go with solid poles Anyway, so I did one on either side, hoping that would tension the roof enough to straighten the central inflatable pole out. And it did make it look a whole lot better, but uh, as you can see from the kink in the roof, and the central pole itself is still being wonky. Uh, so 
as the last phase for sorting out the roof poles, I simply swapped that inflatable pole for a third aluminium one. So now we don't have a 100% air awning, we have a hybrid awning with uh, air poles as the main inflatable poles, the big heavy ones, and then aluminium poles tensioning the roof to give it that, that perfect sort of configuration and making sure the thing stays up properly taut. I should say that the ceiling sort of pouch that formerly held the, the inflatable pole uh, crossways proved to be an extremely useful internet access point <laughs> storage pouch. Uh, we, we had the, the access point stored up there when we were down in Corbel. Yeah, and the USB batteries, so everybody was happy. So that's the basic modular uh, version of the awning set up, but I wasn't done there. Uh, I had another couple of ideas for how we actually extend sideways slightly, uh, and we can help to integrate the boys' uh, little pup tents in, in case they want to be outside and not upstairs here in the caravan. Uh, as they like their own little bit of space increasingly so now they're both teenagers and so you'll have you've recently seen a little video where i just showed how simple it was to stitch a bit of that kedar beading along the side of an ordinary tarp just to make a really super easy to use super simple sunshade and then we reuse that uh, and help and actually use some of the the uh, tie points that were already on that awning to be able to extend out the side with that tarp and to join over the top of the boys pop tents. So here's some footage of that. So because this tarp has webbing straps on it can be secured as I said to the guiding points on the awning and then that helps to extend out the side and make a side shelter and there's a door in the awning here um, so it's easy for the boys to get from their pup tents into the, the main part of the awning, so more like sort of bedrooms and lounge area if you like. And here's me testing it out in the garden. Unfortunately there's a palm tree in the way. But here it is all set up when we were down in Cornwall. And of course being the UK summer it was raining, so at least the boys could get from their pup tents um, into the main bit of the awning without getting completely soaked. And of course without getting all their stuff soaked because they do have a habit of leaving their tent doors open. And then the last thing I did to finish everything off was adding a few eyelets to peg the ground sheet down to stop people tripping over it. Or in the case of the rear doors where they attached to the vehicle, um, it was really difficult to peg these down actually and they were flapping all over the place which made it difficult for people to, to walk through them. Uh, of course this back bit is a bit like a corridor but when you use it with a caravan, there's also an annoying draft back here. So I've added some interior skirts and then popped eyelets in and they just helped cut down the breeze. And actually they hold the side doors much stiller. Uh, so it makes it much less likely that anybody's gonna trip over them. Right, so conclusions. I am very happy that I did this project. Um, one thing I've noticed, which is 
making me slightly unhappy or perhaps I'm happy about it is that um, manufacturers seem to have caught on to this trend for modular stuff uh, in the past few years as well which is kind of nice to know that your thinking is aligned with other people but also annoying <laughs> that you were first and uh, uh, didn't uh, get your video out in time but anyway so manufacturers have caught on with this idea that you have a hub and then you you zip modules sleeping pods on the side uh, and I think that is absolutely brilliant that it's works perfectly for us because it means you have far less stuff to store and then you only have to take out the bit of awning that you need so in theory uh, we could have one awning that does all of this and th the other idea here is to be able to add the boys pup tents on the side and to be able to add either a van or if we're on a tent only site then we can add another small tent for Mike and I at the back uh, so that in fact this acts as a family tent as well so it acts as a tent it acts as the van awning it also acts as the caravan awning meaning we just take the bits we need so we have one of the things instead of three or four uh, which saves space as well so anyway I think the concept is brilliant um, it's taken me quite a while to get to this point but I'm, I'm very happy with how it's set up now and how we can configure and reconfigure depending on uh, what sort of trip we're going on where we're going and what the weather forecast is like of course Anyway, really interested to see what manufacturers come up with over the next few years. Hopefully they'll keep extending this, this concept of modular and hopefully um, there will be realisation that some pitches are very small. You know, camping in the forest, as I said, caravan and camping club, eight by five. So you need to have a small basic unit. But then if you're at a, a CL or a CS or, uh, you know, one of the private sites which are more generous with their pitch sizes or even, you know, caravan club is, tends to be a lot more generous with their pitch sizes. Uh, I find certainly the sites we've been to so far um, so it would be really interesting to see if manufacturers realize that and start producing stuff that we can actually use all over the place which would be perfect so thanks so much for watching everybody I guess it's taken me this long to make this video because it's probably not something that a lot of people would want to copy it was a huge project and really quite difficult to handle that awning through the through the sewing machine and so on uh, so certainly not for the faint-hearted but I've made it in the hope that it was interesting to follow what I did um, and to see the sort of thought process behind me wanting a, a very modular approach to try and cut down the amount of stuff we're buying and using um, and getting much more out of that stuff um so do give us a thumbs up you know add some comments below tell me what sort of awnings you've got what sort of way you like to use them and whether modular would work well for you anyway thanks for watching and i guess i'll catch you in the next one so bye for now see ya